joining our e-seminar today on using Sedatus Excel Tech Trex Amplifier for sleep and EEG ambulatory studies. My name is Franco Avolio, and I am the Sleep and Neurology Education Manager with Natus Medical. I will be your host and your presenter today. Since today's session is accredited for sleep, the demonstration will focus primarily using SleepWork software. However, for those folks who are on the line and interested only in the EEG side, please know that the steps I will be demonstrating in SleepWorks are virtually identical to what you would do in NeuroWorks EEG. All right, so it is practically the same. Okay, so the Trex amplifier is intended for EEG and PSG recordings. It is designed to be used with native SleepWorks software and NeuroWorks software. From versions 6.0 right up to the latest release, 7.0, and it's also, it will also work with our upcoming releases, 7.1. So it's applicable to all versions. The assumption that I'm operating on today is that you have some working knowledge already on how to use SleepWorks and how to use NeuroWorks. Today's session is really about using the Trex amplifier for the purpose of ambulatory recording. So it's not designed to be a session on teaching you how to use SleepWorks or NeuroWorks software, but it's designed to introduce you to the features and functionality of using a Trex amplifier with SleepWorks and NeuroWorks software. I want to begin by demonstrating a few or introducing you to a few aspects about the Trex amplifier and then I will take you through a demonstration. And with the demonstration I'm gonna I'm wearing right now a respiratory two respiratory belts and I'll be putting on an airflow sensor a little bit later. Let's talk about the Trex right now. So the Trex is basically powered by one of two ways. It's either powered by batteries or it's powered by a direct cable connection. On the other side of right down here where you see the USB signal, just going to change the image, there is a USB cable that goes from your computer into the side of the Trex. The Trex accepts a mini USB cable. All right, so once your cable is connected to the Trex, we know that it's receiving power from an external power source. That external power source is the USB cable. So if you look on the side here, you'll see a label that says external power. There's a, a green light if the unit is being operated or run on power from the laptop or computer. So if we change the image here, this is the green light that I'm talking about. So when you're connected by a USB cable, the green light is on. It does not indicate that there's a study running. There's another light that I want to draw your attention to, and that is the study in progress light. All right, so the study in progress light means that there's a study that is running right now and not necessarily recording, but it is running. Once you disconnect the Trex from the unit, it is in recording mode. When the study is running on your computer, you will then see a flashing yellow or amber light right below the green light. So right now, the green light is on, which means we're powered by the USB, and that there's a study in progress. Once we disconnect power, from the Trex, so once we disconnect our USB cable and we now move into ambulatory mode, that is the Trex, it's now running on its own, it's being powered by, by batteries now. All right, so at the back of the Trex, it accepts two AA batteries. We recommend that you use major brand name batteries that are alkaline or lithium batteries. We don't recommend rechargeables. One of the reasons why we don't recommend rechargeables is because we simply don't know how well the batteries can can recharge. So our tests are based on using brand new AA alkaline or lithium batteries. So at the back you have two AA batteries which are typically capable of supplying power to the unit for approximately between 20 and 24 hours depending on the number of channels that you're recording and whether or not you're recording, recording pulse oximetry. Now once the unit is powered by batteries, let's look at the lighting configuration. No longer will you see a green light because it's not receiving power from an external power source, that is the USB cable. There isn't another light that indicates you're running on batteries. The only way that you know that, you're, that there's a study running is that the amber light, the yellow light, will continue to flash. So the yellow light continues to, fa to flash, and that is your indication that 
when the TREX is disconnected, if you see that yellow light flashing, it means that there's a study that is in progress and it's recording on the TREX. So let's have a look at the TREX. The TREX contains 24 referential AC inputs, all right? So I'm looking at the top here. So right at the top here, we've got 24 referential inputs. There's one row, okay, you see one row there, and then you see another row in behind. If we were to look at this input here that says PZ, PZ, which is our red, that input is located on the back side of our diagram. X2, all right, so there's our X2, and that would be the first hole. We've got 24 referentials across the top, all right? There's also a reference input, all right, so the reference input would be number four, all right, point number four, and your common, your ground, there's a separate common ground lead, and that would go into where it says number five there. Okay? So you, the TREX utilizes both a separate reference and a separate ground. If we look on the side panel, you will see four differential AC inputs. So that is the diff 1. Let me just get my pointer. There's diff 1, diff 2, diff 3, diff 4. All right? There's a positive terminal for diff 1 and the negative terminal for diff 1. So. The positive terminal for diff 1 would be right here. The, po uh, the negative terminal for diff 1 would be right here. On the other side, we have the positive terminal for DC1. The positive terminal for DC1 is on the far side. And the negative terminal for DC1, again, is on the far side. All right, so it's important to understand how the labels correspond to the, the input. The four differential channels accept voltages in the plus or minus 10 millivolt range. There are, additionally, there are four DC channels, which are non-isolated DC inputs. And these accept voltages within the, within the range of plus or minus 5 volts. So again, if you're doing a sleep study, your sensors, respiratory belts, your airflow sensors, you can utilize any one of these differential channels or the DC channels. Again, if your device, if your sensor is capable of producing a higher voltage, you can utilize the DC inputs. You can also utilize the differential inputs if your device outputs a smaller voltage. In practice, I've been able to connect most sensors to either DC, DC1, or differential 1. I've been, able, I've been pretty successful at using both of those, either one of those inputs for my sleep sensors. Okay, there's our USB connection. We talked about that. There are a few other inputs on the box which we'll look at. On the corner there, you'll see another input there that says oximeter. We use a known in oximeter accessory which connects to the oximeter port there. And there's my finger with an oximeter probe on it. The same port can be used in EEG if you wanted to connect a photic lamp. All right, so it uses, it uses the same type of, the same connection. We do have some people that utilize the TREX for, for routine EEG studies, even though it's not a recommended, not necessarily a recommended setup, but nonetheless, it's possible. There's another input on the other side where the differentials are, and this is for a patient event button. So again, this is an accessory that is typically used in EEG, but if you want to use it in sleep, you can use it in sleep as well. And that's where that goes. All right, so let me just review some of the comments I made about the battery power. When you're running on batteries, your power is consumed by the TREX, and the factors that affect power consumption are the sampling rate. So the TREX is capable of sampling up to 512 hertz. I believe your choices are your choices are 200, 256, and 5 to 512. The higher the sampling rate, the more power you will you will consume. So if you want to conserve power, set your sampling rate to 200. Another way to save power is by turning off unused channels. So particularly in a sleep study, you probably won't be utilizing all of the channels here. Okay, you're, and so 
If you have any unused channels, if you turn them off in the software, and I'll show you how to do that, you can also save power that way. All right, so same thing in EEG. If, there are, if you're not using any channels, turn off the unused channels, again, to help conserve power. Using brand name batteries will also help. If you're using, just to give you an idea, if you are using a pulse oximeter with your TREX, rather than getting 24 hours on two AA batteries, you'll probably get something like 20 hours, just to give you an idea of how much power a pulse oximeter would consume. Your instructions to a patient who's taking the TREX off-site or wherever it is they're utilizing it would be to, if you're recording, if you were to record longer than, you know, longer than 15, longer than 20 hours, let's say, you would set some type of a time interval and you would advise the patient, look, after 20 hours or so, I would like you to open the box, the back of the, the back of your Trex, take out the batteries and put in a fresh set of batteries. The Trex has flash memory, which means you're not going to lose your study if you take power away from the unit. Now, that being said, we don't advise that you remove the batteries and leave it disconnected, leave it without power for no, for no more than a few minutes, really, because especially if you want to continue recording. One of the reasons for that is has to do with the way the Trex records and attempts to synchronize the data with time. So, the instructions, what we typically advise is if you want to record more than 20 hours, let's say, you can advise the patient at some point, take out the batteries and replace them with a fresh set of new batteries. All right? And just do that, and that should take you no longer than, than one or two minutes. And if you do that and you put the batteries back in, the unit, the Trex, will continue to record the study. You'll have a gap in your study where the, battery, the batteries were changed. So if you were disconnected, if you had no batteries for, let's say, two minutes, then you can expect to see a gap in your study of approximately two minutes. So what I've done now is, you can't see this, but I just wanted to show you the setup that I currently have. So I have a Trex right now with me. I've got an oximeter, and I'm going to put that on my, I've got the patient event button connected, and I've also got airflow sensor, and I've got two respiratory belts on, my chest and abdomen, abdominal chest belt. I've got some, some EEG electrodes connected. They're not on my head, though, uh, but I do got, I have them connected just for demonstration mm -hmm. purposes so we can have something to look at on screen. So I'm just putting the probe on my finger right now, and I'm just about to put on my airflow sensor, so if you can just bear with me for a second. All right, I wanted to show you a close-up of the connection, connections that I'm utilizing here. If you look at, I think it's probably easier to look to follow the abdominal cable here. If you look at the abdominal cable here, all right, so I've got my abdominal cord here. We follow it, okay, we're following it, and I've got it plugged into the top row, which corresponds to differential four, okay? I'm also utilizing differential one, differential two, and I'm also utilizing DC1 as well. Uh, I don't think I have anything in DC2. Okay? So again, your transducers, like your airflow and your respiratory belt, you can plug them in on the differential side of your amplifier. There's a pouch that comes with the Trex, and so if you want, once you're, you have all your connections, you can store your transducers and your Trex amplifier inside one of the carrying cases that are supplied. The carrying case can be connected to your belt. There's also a, a lanyard cable that you can wear around your neck. There's a, po a pouch, little pouch or pocket in the front. I'm not sure if you can see that in the image, but there's a spot there where you can also store some extra battery. So right now, my Trex is being powered by external power. It is connected to my laptop. Okay. I'm going to share my desktop right now, and I created a new database just for today, just to keep things simple. When you're using a Trex amplifier, there is a separate little software module that we use to manage studies that are on the Trex. All right, so 
The module or the study package is called the Ambulatory Manager, which can be found by going up into Tools and selecting Ambulatory Manager. So I'm going to select that right now. At the top here it says Select Head Box, and it says the Head Box that is connected to the USB. All right, it doesn't say the Head Box connected to the truck. It's just whatever is connected to USB is what it's reading right now. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to click on Headbox Administration, if we click on Headbox Administration, it tells us what the Headbox is. If there's a serial number, it'll display that here as well. It also gives us the version of software that is on the Headbox. It provides us with the status of this Headbox. If there was a study in progress right now, you'd see a check mark. If it was recording, you'd see a check mark. If there was a study just sitting in the storage, you would see this checked as well. It tells us what percentage of the memory has been used, and it also gives us a power indicator of the batteries that are on the Trex right now. In order to be able to communicate with the Trex in the first place, I'm just going to step back for a second. All right, now the first time you connect a Trex to a computer, think back to whenever you, you install or put in a USB key, a USB storage key. What happens? In the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the operating system displaying a message that says found new hardware and then it runs through a series of steps to demonstrate that the operating system has discovered an external device and it attempts to load the relevant drivers so that your computer can talk to the device. So the same thing needs to occur with the Trex. If I took a Trex right now and I were to connected to a machine for the first time. This is just sort of a quick summary of what you can expect to see. You plug it in, all right, so you're connecting the USB connection for the first time. In the bottom right-hand corner, you get the found new hardware symbol. When the symbol comes up, you can choose to install the software, the driver, from a specific location, because we know where the driver file is located. You can browse to your NeuroWorks directory, wherever that is stored on your computer, which is likely on your D drive or C drive. Once you point it to that directory, it'll install the necessary USB drive driver for the Excel text for the, uh, the Trex amplifier. In addition to having an amplifier that's on your, your Trex system, there's also a storage component to it. So you'll see it go through another series of steps of finding new hardware, such as what you've seen here, because it's also, the computer is also attempting to create a language to talk to the hard drive or the flash memory drive on the Trex unit. So there's sort of a, it's sort of a two-step process. There's a process to install the driver to communicate with the Trex amplifier, and then there's another process where it's installing a driver so that it can communicate with the hard drive or the flash memory on the Trex unit. Once you are done, you can click Yes to restart your computer. So it's pretty straightforward. The only thing that we did here that was really required from user input was the was changing the location. Rather than saying have Windows search for the driver, you can actually browse to the specific NeuroWorks folder and just have the software go to the NeuroWorks folder to identify and locate the driver for the Trex. Okay, so we're back in our desktop. I see that there are no studies in progress, there are no studies in storage. I cannot start a study if I had any of these boxes checked. So we've got a clean record, and I'm just going to go to storage man management here. And again, you can verify, and we see that there are no studies showing. Click Done, and I'm going to close out the window. Now I'm going to create a new study. I'm going to give it a name, Nathan Phillips. Okay? I'm not going to fill out the rest of these fields, at least not now. At the bottom here, where it says head box name, it should read connected to USB. All right? Now, when you're recording, just a comment about video source. We have a new Trex video combination or package that will become available fairly soon. It's called the Trex HD. I will come back and talk about that in a few uh, in a few minutes. But right now, we are operating on the assumption that we are recording an ambulatory study without video. Therefore, when it comes to the video source here, we really don't need to make any changes since we're really not going to be recording any video. All right, so I'm going to click Start, and now we have our study. Now, if we go up into Edit Settings, and I'm going to go over to the Acquisition tab, right now we see that 
all of our channels are turned on. So even though you only see these channels right now, we are still recording on all the other channels. So I'm just going to display a reference montage here. And we see signals for all of the inputs right now. So we're recording this even though we don't have any inputs connected to it. Uh, if you recall, I said that one way to preserve battery power was to turn off unused channels. Okay? So what I've done is I've created a montage, and I'm going to switch to my montage called Ambulatory Diagnostic. And I'm only interested in recording the channels that I see in my montage currently. So we could manually go back into Edit Settings and manually turn off all of the unused channels where I, click, where I can click Set Manually. But there's a shortcut up here where it says Controls. And there's an option here that says Activate Channels. So I'm going to click on Activate Channels. And what that does is Activate Channels looks at your current montage and it basically turns all of the channels or all of the inputs that do not appear in your present montage, it changes their status to off. All right? So essentially what it does, we call it activate channels because you are simply activating the channels that are in display in your montage and we're turning off all the other channels. So I'm going to click OK and it prompts me, are you sure? And I'm going to say, yes, I'm sure. All right, so now if I were to switch to that reference all channel, you can verify and we can see that these channels have been turned off. And by doing this, we are preserving battery power. We're also preserving hard drive space. Not by a lot, but we are preserving some hard drive space. OK, I'm going to go back to my ambulatory diagnostic montage. I'm going to start recording so we can start to collect some data. So before we continue, if you look at this particular montage, specifically at the channel labels, you will see that I, I'm using some labels such as M1, M2. Since we're talking about sleep, I'm using LOC, left eye, right eye, okay, flow, chest, abdomen. Now, if you recall, when you look at the labels on the treks, all right, when you look at the labels on the treks, you do not, by default, see these types of labeling. You don't see flow, chest, or abdomen. You don't even see M1 or M2. You, you don't see LOC or, or ROC, all right? But it doesn't mean you can't use these inputs. It simply means we need to relabel these inputs to line them up with the labels that we want to use. So I just want you to be aware that, I, that previously, before the study started, I went into Edit Settings and I went into Channel Labels. I decided to use my X1 input and relabel that and call it Left Eye, let LOC. I decided to relabel X2 to ROC. And I also relabeled the following differential channels, the flow, chest, there's a sum channel, abdominal channel, and snore on the DC1. You can relabel any one of these channels, but I had done this previously. And then I went to my montage, I created a montage, I clicked on the Apply Custom Labels tab so that I can use my labels and not the head box labels. All right, so if you right click on here, LOC, you see LOC here, you do not see I think I used X1 for that. All right, so T4, what comes beneath T4? X1. So in the montage, you'll notice you right-click, what comes beneath T4? X1 natively, but I relabeled it to LOC, so that just shows up in my, in my list here. Okay, so you might want to take a few extra steps beforehand to just change some of the labels to suit your needs. So I'm happy with my channel labels, and I'm going to run a channel test. So basically, you can run through your regular protocols. You can perform a channel test. Once you are content with your channel test, I won't wait for this to, to finish in the interest of time, but once you're content with your channel test, we can end the channel test. We can also perform an impedance test. And I just want to see if you can notice something here in the window. If you look at our impedance test here, it's displaying all of the inputs on our Trex amplifier. However, the test is only being applied to those channels that are turned on. So one of the benefits of activating channels and turning off unused channels is that it speeds up your, your impedance testing. All right, so you can see that because 
your FP1, F, F7, T3, you'll notice that the option buttons next to it are disabled or grayed out. All right, and I can lock on a channel if I want. Once you're content, we can end our impedance test. All right, if there are any other tests that you would like to perform, such as bile cows, we can perform our bile cows. All right, we're recording the study, asking the patient to perform a series of tasks. If you need to make any further adjustments, now is the time to do it. All right, once we're content, let's put a body position tag. If you're using a body position sensor, if you've got one, cal you can calibrate one with the unit, you can have the system automatically tag the body position. All right, so probably not so important that I put the position sensor now, because right now they're probably standing or sitting. All right, so once you are content with your study, you're now ready to start your ambulatory mode. All right, and so to do that, you can go to controls, and there's an option up here that says start ambulatory study. All right, so I'm going to click on that, and then it says an ambulatory study will be started, and the current waveform window will be closed. Continue. I'll say yes. All right, so there's our study. We've recorded approximately 4 minutes and 40 seconds so far. The TREX is still connected to my computer. It's being powered by the USB cable. And I've put some AA batteries in the TREX. And I'm going to, just before I disconnect it, I'm going to go to my system tray here. And I'm going to left-click on that icon below there where it contains my USB, my connected devices. And I'm going to select the option that says, safely remove the Exaltech USB Trex ambulatory. So I'm basically following the same procedure that you would if you were to disconnect a USB drive from your computer. Perhaps some of you just sort of yank it out. I mean, yeah, that could work too, but the best and I guess the safest way to really do this is by going through this step here and safely removing it. So I'm going to left click on safely remove. All right, and now it's telling me it is now safe to disconnect. So I'm going to disconnect the cable from my USB device. The green light is no longer displayed, but the study in progress light, the flashing yellow orangey light, is now flashing, indicating that the study is in progress. It's recording on my Trex amplifier now. If you look up in your database window, you no longer see that red star there that indicates you've got a live study running. All right, so this machine, if I wanted to connect another Trex amplifier, for example, I could start another study right now. Or if I had another amplifier, I could still use this machine for another study. All right, so I want to give the Trex just a couple of minutes to record some data for us. In the meantime, I'm going to take this moment to go back and just talk briefly about the Trex video option. All right, so this isn't released yet, but it will be released fairly soon. I believe either by the end of this quarter or in the next quarter. But basically, this is a, a system that is capable of being used for EEG and PSG, but in addition to recording your data signals, you also have the option of recording up to 40 hours of high definition video. All right, so the, the system basically includes a Trex, there's, an, there's a tripod, and there's a high definition camera. A high definition camera is very specific. You cannot just, you know, use any type of camera. It requires a very specific, in this particular case, it's a Sony model, Sony camera with a, a very particular model number, and that's because in order to be able to successfully synchronize, your camera video with the data on the, the, the Trex amplifier, we had to work with a very specific model. So the Trex amplifier isn't the same as a regular, as a standard Trex amplifier. The, the, the Trex amplifier that is used for, for video contains a Bluetooth module within it. The Bluetooth module within the Trex communicates with a Trex video adapter, and that's this little black box here that you see here on top of the tripod, it communicates with this video adapter, and the video adapter, in turn, is connected to the camera using this cable. All right, so the workflow 
for a system like this is that basically if you wanted to send a patient home for a, uh, an ambulatory study, whether it's for sleep or EEG, you would still ask them to come, come to the lab, if that's your protocol, you would set up your, set up your signal, set up your electrodes and whatnot, run your impedance test and everything, and making sure that all of your signals are, are, are appropriate. There's a, an additional test that requires you to start a recording in the lab, or at least at the time when you're doing all your biocals and your calibrations with your tracks, there's an additional test that is done at that time that requires you to turn the video camera on and to record a few seconds of video. Once the test is done, you can turn the camera off and the user or the patient can go home, for example, with the camera and with the TREX. The TREX continues to record, but when the user is ready to start recording video, all they have to do is manually press the start, position the camera, and press the start recording button on the camera. All right, the user can start or they can stop recording as many times as they want on the camera in case they don't want to record all their actions. They can do, do so, and by the time they're done, when they return back to the, the lab, the video is stored and saved on the camera. The data and the, your signal data still stay stored on the TREX. There's a synchronization procedure that occurs back in the laboratory that then uploads the video to Sleepworks or Neuroworks and synchronizes the video with the data on the TREX. So again, this is an option that is not currently available, but it is coming out and I'm not officially qualified to give the release date. However, I, my understanding is that it may come out as early by the end of this quarter, if not the next quarter. That's my understanding. However, again, that is not an official or qualified response. And that setup is called the Trex HD because it utilizes an HD camera. All right, so let's say the patient comes back to the office, to your laboratory, and we now, we want to end the study, and then we want to upload the study for review. So what I need to do is connect, reconnect my USB cable back into the Trex unit. So I'm taking my USB cable right now, and I'm plugging it back in to the Trex. Maybe you heard the noise there, the notification bell, indicating that the tracks is connected. All right, so I want to just draw your attention to a couple of things first. Recall when we started the track study, we had recorded 4 minutes and 40 seconds. All right, I'm looking at the duration here in the database window. All right, so just, I just want you to take a mental note of that. Let's go up to Tools, Ambulatory Manager. And first off, let's go into Headbox Administration. All right, so you can see right now, the Headbox, under Headbox Status, it's telling us that there's a study in progress, it's recording, and that there's a study in storage. Make sense? The About 1% of the memory in the TREX has been used. So the TREX, we have a couple of versions of TREX amplifiers, one that is capable of recording up to 48 hours and another one that is capable of recording up to 96 hours. So this gives us the status. I'm going to click Done. Now let's go into Storage Management. So in Storage Management, it tells me that there is one study, Nathan Phillips, that's the file ID, it gives me the approximate size, and it says that the study is currently running. So before I can upload the study, I need to end the study. I'm going to, it's selected, and now I'm going to click on End the Study. Are you sure you want to end the study? And I will click on Yes. All right, so it changes our status from running to no, indicating that it is no longer running. I'm just going to click Done. Go back to Headbox Administration, and you see that the status has been updated. Study in progress, no longer recording. So if you didn't have time to upload the study and deal with it right now, you could do this a little bit later. You could end the study just so it stops recording, remove the electrodes from your patient, and you could send them off. And you can come back to this Trex head box later to upload the study. All right, so let's say we come back later, and we're back into storage management. So the study's ended. Now I want to upload the study. So again, 
I want to draw your attention to the duration, 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Let's upload the study now by left-clicking on the Upload Study button. And what it does is that it appends all of the data that was stored on the tracks, or recorded by the tracks, and it adds it to the original study. And you'll see that our duration has changed from 4 minutes and 40 seconds to 13 minutes and 55 seconds. So that is the total duration of the study now. All right, so let's go, let's click on Done. Let's exit, and let's go into Review. Let's review our study. All right, so here's our study. This is our channel test, our impedance test from the beginning. And I'm just going to pull up the annotation viewer because I'm looking for the point that we started the ambulatory study. So 12, 38, 18 seconds, we started our ambulatory study. All right, in other words, we disconnected the USB cable and the batteries took over. All right, so we have a note in our ambulatory, in our annotation viewer, when the ambulatory mode began and then when the study was ended. Okay, so of course, if you're on sleep now, you can simply treat this as, as if you had recorded a study using any one of our other amplifiers. Let's see if we put a lights off. Did we use the lights off? We didn't put a lights off signal. So I'm just going to go to after the last file, Cal, and I can insert a light off tag. All right. And we can start to, just going to page through by Epic. And we can start to stage our study. Now, if this is EEG, you're not staging your epics. I know you're looking at pages rather than epics. If you're looking at pages, you can just continue to scroll through your study and start making your annotations and your observations. You can add bookmarks. You can add features and do all of the other features that are available in Neuroworks. So you've opened the study for review. Now let's close it. All right. Now let's say I want to start another ambulatory study. So I'm going to go to New Sleep. I'm going to type in a name. Before I click Start, can you, I'm connected to USB. Before I click Start, can you guess what's going to happen? I'm going to click Start. And I'm given a message that says, I can, you cannot start a new study until the data from the previous study is uploaded and cleared. Well, we uploaded the study, but we didn't clear the memory. All right, so before we can start another study, we need to go back into our ambulatory manager back to storage management, and we need to select our study, and we need to clear the memory on the track. I did this workflow intentionally. You'll notice that I didn't clear the memory as soon as I uploaded it. I wanted to go into review just to make sure that the study was there. All right, even though there's a visual indication on the screen here that tells me that the study is there, still, I like to be extra careful, and I wanted to go into review just to verify that the study was, in fact, there. So now, I'm content, I've seen it, I'm going to clear the memory. Are you sure? Yes. And it now clears the memory and makes the tracks available for recording a new study. Now, in the event that you make a mistake, if you clear the memory and you did not record a new study, you do have the option to undelete the study. All right, so if I click on undelete the study, it'll bring it back. All right, I'm going to clear the memory again. Are you sure? Yes. All right, so as long as you do not record another study, you, can, you should be able to undelete your last study, all right, the last study that you uploaded. All right, so I've got a cleared memory. I'm done. All right, look at our Headbox administration. It confirms the status that there's nothing in storage. It also gives me an indication of our battery life. I'm going to click Done exit, and I'm now ready to start a new study. Let's say Nathan Phillips comes, comes back for another ambulatory study, so I'm going to use the returning function, and I've got my USB selected, and I will click Start. And here we are again. At this point, that concludes the demonstration part of this. I am going to have a look at the questions. I just want to clarify with respect to the labeling, now the, the TREX amplifier that I use today utilizes a label that is more appropriate for an EEG study. doesn't mean you can't use it for sleep. It just means you have to go through the, the act of relabeling. We do have a different label, labeling the template, 
that you can put on your trek that corresponds and utilizes sleep terminology. Okay, so that is available. Someone asked about in interfacing a PTAF, which is the airflow pressure transducer. And the airflow pressure transducer can be interfaced by using one of these differential inputs on here. Also, with respect to interfacing something like a PTAF, these devices often they have a gain setting on them. And so you can either use the gain setting on the actual device to control the voltage that comes out of the device so you can you know you can increase the gain, increase the voltage, or you can decrease it. So through a combination of either adjusting the gain on the PTAF or adjusting the sensitivity in your software, you should be able to come up with a an acceptable signal. Alright, so the question essentially is asking if you have a scenario where you have a patient who is not mobile and at home could you mail them or ship the TREX unit to them, have them apply the sensors themselves, and without having to start the recording, let's say, in the laboratory? In other words, you want to be able to ship the TREX unit to someone's home, have the patient put on the sensors, and have the patient manually start the recording. That is not possible. The recording can only be started by having a connection to the computer or to a laptop. I suspect that one of the reasons why it's done that way is simply uh, could be for quality assurance, just to kind of verify maybe the integrity of the study to make sure that a, a technician is present to ensure that the channel test is done appropriately and the impedances are appropriate and whatnot. That's just one of my, that would be my best guess as to why it's not that way. However, if you are interested in a feature like that, I would encourage you, you can email myself if you like, and I would forward your, your request or your comment to our product managers. Or at your request, I can have a product manager follow up with you with respect to that question. So thank you very much once again for your questions. Take care, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye for now.